Hey, good morning or good evening, everyone. Welcome to this class. This class is the final module for performing site response analysis based on the ASC 716 requirements. This class will cover the soil models and site response analysis. Again, this slide shows three major components for site response analysis. I talk about other two in previous classes. And this class will focus on how to determine the soil models and perform the site response analysis. Um, first, let's still go through the code requirement. Uh, section 21.1.3 provide the code requirement for site re response analysis and the computated results. Um, I won't read the whole thing, but uh, I highlight the important issues in red. First, you want to make sure your input motion, they are outcropping motions. And also, you want to make sure you have a, a proper techniques to capture the long linearity of soil property. So in the code, it allows you to use a long linear or equivalent linear approach. And, uh, you know, the approach to develop the ground surface response spectrum is based on the ratio of uh, the surface ground motion to the input motion. Then once you run all of them, you can average them, uh, get the average ratio that apply to the input response spectrum to get your final design spectrum. Uh, certainly you need to consider the uncertainty for soil properties in promotion depths of soil model uh, those already covered in the previous class so what is outcrop motion as you can see on this slide outcrop motion is uh, the motion at the ground surface typically when the motion propagate to this location there's nowhere to go it will completely reflect so you can see the motion actually is amplified by uh, by the reflective wave is double. So at the rock and soil interface, the wave can still be go into the soil can be reflect. So the the motion at the the bedrock location actually generally is smaller than the rock outcrop motion. So keep this in mind, when you use software to run the site response analysis, you need to double check and uh, ensure the outcrop motion is an option. Uh, you can input outcrop motion. As we talked about in the previous class for the wave propagation, when the wave propagate near the ground surface due to the wave refraction, the wave is propagated in the vertical direction. And the majority, I would say more than 90% of energy of the earthquake are from the seismic S wave. So as for the 1D side response analysis, you can see this is the wave propagation in the vertical direction. As we know, the S wave, the particle movement is perpendicular to the wave propagation direction. So you simulate the particle movement direction in the horizontal direction. Nonlinearity of soil properties. Um, we talked about this uh, chart before. The soil properties is uh, quite nonlinear. It will reduce significantly with the increase of shear strain. And also, the soil behavior are in somewhat different at different depths. That because in a deeper location, you have higher confining stress. So this chart, you know, the vertical axis is a G over G max. It is a dimension is the G max is the maximum shear modulus at small strain. So you can say. Um, at different depths, it has different behavior of the long linearity. So this is a non-linearity for the damping. 
the soil damping actually increase with the increase of shear strain as shown on this chart. So the damping is defined as this equation and the delta W is uh, the entire hysteria testing loop and this W is this triangle area. As demonstrated in previous slide, the soil material is highly nonlinear for stiffness and damping. So this slide is the give you a very high level how to use equivalent linear approach to simulate the nonlinearity of stiffness and damping. Um, there are some other YouTube you can search online, give you more detailed explanation about this approach. So first you will start the analysis with uh, initial shear modulus, typically is a G max and the initial damping. Uh, you can use uh, the damping at a small strain, you can use a random 5% or something as damping. Then you run the analysis. Remember this, uh, anal this uh, the G1 or uh, each the one, the damping one, they are just for the entire uh, soil layer and for the entire earthquake duration. So this, for the equivalent linear approach, it can only run for the frequency domain analysis. So after the first run, you will determine a soil strain, the gamma one, and uh, from the gamma one, you can determine a new shear modulus and new damping. So you can use this shear modulus and damping as a second, as an average soil property for the second run. Then you keep going, you will get a, a new soil strain for the soil layer. You can get a, a new shear modulus and damping. So just do this uh, iteration until the difference of the shear modulus from the current step and the previous step, they are in tolerance. Or at the same time for the damping, they are the difference between two steps are too small, they are in the tolerance. You basically see the analysis the converge, then you get your ground uh, surface response uh, analysis. So basically this approach is uh, look at the average effect for the long linear soil response during earthquake. Long linear approach is performed in time domain to simulate the soil response following the earthquake shake, shaking as shown on this slide, the horizontal axis represent the time. Basic the the time. Uh, this is the time this, when the earthquake start, then and the earthquake end. And these the depths is for the soil different layers. So basically, at each time step, you want to make sure this wave equation is satisfied. So basically, this is a kind of force um, balance uh, at each layer and each time step. So as demonstrated, you know, I this time J and the, the depth Z1, you need to make sure the the force is balanced at this moment and these steps. So for that you need a much more complicated soil model that can simulate initial loading, reloading, and unloading. So as you can see, uh, this is a initial loading and uh, uh, reloading, uh, unloading, and reloading. So you want 
have a much complicated model can catch these uh, uh, features. So certainly the long linear approach is a more accurate comparing equivalent linear approach. Uh, equivalent linear approach uh, may have convergency issue uh, when the soil is too soft or the input motion is too high. Uh, this slide just provide you uh, available programs that can do the site response analysis. And uh, for the program, bow in dark blue, that's the program allow in the code or recommend in the code. And uh, I highly recommend the deep soils because it's free. It can do both equivalent linear and uh, long linear analysis. And you can also use this new one, the Strata. Uh, it has the same code, uh, same approach as Shake 2000, but uh, it provides a batch uh, option. It's much more uh, convenient when you deal with multiple input motions. So this slide just demonstrates how you calculate response spectral ratios. So this is the input motion spectrum. So you can see that's probably from the spec spectrum matching. And uh, then after side response analysis, this is a spectrum for the ground surface motion. Uh, you can see for the no period range, high frequency range, because the soil damping, uh, the side response analysis basically kind of filter the high frequency component. And for the components near 0.8 seconds, there is a significant amplification. So the response spectral ratio is that you find your spectral value at different period. You use the surface motion value divided by the input motion value. You can calculate this uh, response spectral ratio. So from the response spectral ratio, you can say the maximum amplification ratio is uh, about 2.2 at a, the period of one second. So you can do this for all the input motions. This example, we use five input motions. And after that, you based on code, you can calculate the average uh, response spectral ratio as shown in red. So this all the analysis is uh, we use the ideal case for one 100 feet soil with a uniform shear wave velocity of 900 feet per second. So this is a side class D side. So once you have the average response spectral ratio, as what I said, you know, this is your input motion spectrum. You apply the average response spectral ratio on that, you can get your design ground motion spectrum. But that's uh, not the end of your analysis. The code have additional requirement for developing the side response analysis for design. So first, uh, the design spectrum is take a uh, two third of MC spectrum derived from side response analysis. For this case, actually the red one is already design spectrum. So right, we already consider that. Then the second one is a uh, design spectrum at any period should not taking as less than 80% of the SA so what does that mean? You know, this is a, based on the, the code. You know, this is not based on the chapter 11 uh, table. Uh, the FAFV value, there are some requirement for FAFV value are from chapter 21. You, based on that, you can develop the side class D. 
So actually, this side class D is the same as that you will derive from the exception two. So then you take 80%, you will get this dark red one. So then you compare your the actual ground surface, average actual ground surface spectrum. So for the code, it does allow the design spectrum at any period is taken as less than this 80% floor. So eventually this dark blue spectrum will be the final design spectrum. So in the, as indicated in the chapter 21, you can still use the equivalent lateral force approach for seismic design. Even uh, you perform the size specific response analysis. The section 21.4 provides details to determine the SDS and SD1. So the first the SDS should be equal to 90% of the maximum the SA, the spectral value at any period within the range from 0.2 seconds to 5 seconds. So for this case, from the 0.2 second to 5 second, the maximum value is uh, SA equal to 0.89. So when you use this equation, 90% of 0.89, you got the 0.8G. And SD1 will be the maximum value from the period 1 to 2 second for the side with uh, Sherby velocity greater than uh, 1200 feet and for the short wave velocity less than 1200 feet it will be from one second to the five seconds so for this case the maximum value is at the one second so basically sd1 is also equal to 0.8g so if you use this sds and sd1 and the chapter 11 you can construct the design spectrum uh, for the natural equivalent force approach as shown in the in the green. As what I said, you know, if you don't run the side response analysis, you uh, use the exception two to develop the ground surface spectrum, that will be this dark red. So basically the takeaway is uh, if you run the side response analysis, you can reduce the 20% of seismic load for all the periods. This is a huge benefit. You know, it depends on your project size. This can uh, easily to save you more than 100,000 up to millions of dollars. So that will be easy to cover the, the cost you use to run the size specific response analysis. And uh, another thing is uh, not just no reduction, the code uh, allow you use the SDS and SD1 from size specific response analysis to determine the seismic design category, which means you could get a lower seismic design category through the side response analysis. That is also a huge benefit to simplify your seismic detailing. So this and the series of classes for side response analysis per ASC 716. Please let me know any question, comments, uh, or if you need help on the side response analysis. Thank you very much.